Last year at this time, I uploaded this video asking if a globe denier can explain the observed December sun path in the southern hemisphere. Now, a few flat earthers did reply, but none of them gave an explanation. Wisdom Keeper wrote, at 50 seconds, I claim the sun moves across the sky. Funny, I thought the earth moved on the globe model while the sun remained stationary. Teddy C. wrote that since the sun was traveling above the negative 23rd parallel, which is the Tropic of Capricorn, he was wondering why he didn't see the New Zealand sun rise to the northeast instead of to the southeast. And of course, this is the difference between the way the sun works on both the flat earth and the globe. Exploring the plane agrees that yes, your model works well here, but of course he wants some evidence of curvature or motion, and we have a long back and forth because he is still convinced that the Earth is flat. EFG test thought that my video raised some interesting questions, but he also made the point that I had to express some mockery at the end when I said ignorance is bliss when it comes to flat Earth beliefs because flat Earthers need to ignore reality but he still was not able to explain this sun path on a flat earth. The following is a repeat of my upload from last year with a few small changes. Now we all know that flat earthers still haven't given a logical explanation for sunrise and sunset on the equinox, but today I'm gonna to take a look at December solstice sun observations in the Southern Hemisphere that make absolutely no sense at all on the flat earth model. It would also be interesting to hear why Flatthroid thinks the sun path that he sees from South Africa is a flatter sun going around the North Pole. Now during the December solstice, everybody sees the sunrise in the southeast and set in the southwest. So I'm going to compare the observed sun that I saw in my hometown of Seattle, Washington, which is in the northern hemisphere, to the observed sun I saw in Queenstown, New Zealand, which is in the southern hemisphere. Seattle is located in the northwest corner of the United States at 47.6 degrees north latitude. I'm going to start with the June solstice because it's easier to understand how the sun moves across the sky from Seattle. And I'm using this graphic from suncalc.org because it shows exactly what I see when I'm in Seattle. So sunrise is to the northeast at 5.11 a.m. And the rising sun moves to your right and is to the south of you at solar noon. And it continues moving to your right to set in the northwest at 9.11 p.m. And of course, this is our longest day of the year at 16 hours. Now after sunset, it is the northwest horizon that is lit during dusk. And the sun continues on a path below the northern horizon to the east, where at dawn it lights the northeast horizon before sunrise. Now this is the sun path that is the basis of the flat earth model because at night it appears to go around the north pole. Now during the December solstice, of course, the sun is observed rising towards the southeast. And again, the observed sun moves across the sky to the right to set in the southwest. And this is our shortest day of the year at eight and a half hours. And now the sun continues on a path below the western, northern, and eastern horizon as it returns to the southeast to rise again in the morning. Now many years ago, I spent a week in Queenstown, which is in the southern part of the South Island of New Zealand. And at 45 degrees south latitude, it's pretty equivalent to the 47.6 degree north latitude of Seattle. But the observed path of the sun in Queenstown is quite different than the observed path of the sun in Seattle. Now, while it's winter in the northern hemisphere during the December solstice, it is summer in the southern hemisphere. And again, I'm going to use suncalc.org's graphics because they match what I saw when I was in Queenstown. So from Queenstown, the observed sun rises in the southeast at 5.17 a.m. And the rising sun moves to the left to the north at solar noon. And it continues moving left across the sky to set in the southwest at 9.32 p.m. And this is their longest day of the year at 15.6 hours. Now this is a little bit less than Seattle's 16 hour long day during the June solstice, but this is because Queenstown is a few degrees closer to the equator. 
And after sunset, it is the southwest horizon that is lit after dusk as the sun travels below the southern horizon to light the southeast horizon before sunrise. So I have a question for flat earthers, and of course this includes flatzoid because I know he lives in the southern hemisphere. So if the earth is really flat with a sun orbiting around the North Pole, then why would anyone observe a sun path that is in the complete opposite direction? The North Pole is 9,330 miles in this direction, and anybody that lives or travels to the Southern Hemisphere knows that at night the observed sun goes below the Southern Horizon. And that would be a path that takes it around the South Pole. Now when you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you see the sun angling down to the right as it sets. And here's a time-lapse video of the setting sun from my hometown in Seattle. And of course, it is angling down to the right to set behind the Olympic Mountains in the distance. Now in the southern hemisphere, the setting sun angles down to the left. And of course, this is in the complete opposite direction of the observed setting sun in the northern hemisphere. Now here's a time-lapse video of the setting sun from Australia in the Southern Hemisphere, and you can see that is angling down to the left. Now I live in the tropics, and from here you see a setting sun that is much more perpendicular to the horizon. If you go down to Singapore, which is about 950 miles to the south of me, it is one degree north of the equator, and here the setting sun is almost perfectly perpendicular to the horizon. And here is a time lapse of the setting sun from Singapore. And you can see that it angles slightly to the right since it is about one degree north of the equator. Now the path of the setting sun that we actually see from these different locations makes absolutely no sense at all in the flat earth. Because if you lived on a flat earth with the sun orbiting around the North Pole, then everybody should see the setting sun angling down to the right. Now let's take another look at the observed sun path from Queenstown, New Zealand, where the observed sun rises towards the southeast and sets towards the southwest. Because this brings up another question. Here's a flat earth map showing the sun path above the Tropic of Capricorn on the December solstice. And of course, this is to the north of Queenstown. So if the earth was really flat, then they should see the sun rising towards the northeast and setting towards the northwest. Of course, in reality, they see the sun rising and setting in the complete opposite direction, and this is another flat Earth failure. But the axial tilt of the globe easily explains why everybody sees the sun rising and setting in the same direction on both the solstices and the equinoxes. And again, this is something that flat earthers need to consider because it doesn't matter where you are in the southern hemisphere, you cannot ignore the fact that you do not see a sun orbiting around the North Pole. And finally for flatsoid, why do you think the sun path you see from South Africa is a flatter sun going around the North Pole? 